All right, Jim, our next question sent to corny drive through at gmail.com from Philip Wright. I was recently reviewing some footage of the Dynamite Kid on YouTube, and wow, I was always a fan of the British Bulldogs, but I never got to see Dynamite as a single. Oh, shit. He had some incredible matches, and I never knew he wrestled Macho Man in the WWE, in which I think, uh, in which I think is awesome, as I'm also a big fan of Macho Man. Also, so this is, boy, it's like Loki wrote this. Uh, my now question. Don't insult the man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Philip. My my question See, is: You're your, the heel on this program. I'm the baby face. My question is: In your opinion, how great was he? Do you think he gets the full credit he deserves for his contributions to the business? When I look at a Chris Benoit and Davy Richards, I can't help but be reminded of Dynamite, as they are almost mirror images of him. Also. I thought The Undertaker invented the Tombstone pile driver, but maybe Dynamite invented it as he was <laughs> using it before his WWE run. Well, first of all, my God, who invented... Uh, that would go back in Mexico to the 40s, right? The, you know, the Tombstone. It's been around. It's not... Dynamite Kid didn't invent it. Yes. Um, Andre. Andre did a pretty mean Tombstone when he was a young man in Montreal, from what the Andre book said. Um, you know, it, it, here's the thing. I guess now a lot of people are the younger crowd, the younger audience, even though Dynamite is not only around, it was around in the 80s WWF and video era, but the, the Japanese stuff, but maybe they just didn't know to, to look because he's not talked about, you know, for the last 30 years. But at the time in the, 80s i think all the smart fans you know all the smart fans like <laughs> all five thousand of them around the world universally considered dynamite the best worker in the business in ring a lot of the guys that had been around him and knew what the fuck was up knew that he was the best you know in ring athletic convincing wildest ass bump taken performer but was also you know a somewhat unhappy, miserable, sharp, you know, ribber when he, you know, when he wanted to be a, you know, a, 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 a troubling person sometimes behind the scenes to people probably would not have lasted long in today's environment, uh, just for the variety of harsh things he would do to people. Uh, but uh, I mean, you know, when you could watch those matches with tiger mask, that's when I first got my first VCRs and that was the rage and everybody now is going to be saying, oh, well, Cornette liked the flippy stuff then. They were doing, and Brian, you can help because you came along the generation after, but you've studied the tapes extensively. You can help me try to explain, if I can't, that these guys were so incredible, so athletic. Uh, their work was so good and believable that they were doing these outrageous moves but it seemed still somehow real it was within the flow of the match when just all of a sudden dynamite would pick tiger mask up for a vertical suplex and they would fly backwards over the top rope and both it looked like it killed them and they actually sold it for a while and you know uh, uh considering today grading on today's curve um, and all the stuff there was, they never lost the element of a struggle or a contest, but they were inventing all this shit because they were just such, I mean, Sayama was probably overall a better athlete than dynamite dynamite as a complete believable wrestler, badass, and with a badass body was probably the, obviously the tougher fucking guy. Um, but, you know, but Dynamite looked in those days, and see, that's the thing, the 80s WWF stuff, he had slowed down so much, not only speed physically, but in, in the things that he did in the ring and the bumps that he took, not only because his body was starting to break down, but also because, what did he gain, 30, 40 pounds on st straight off of steroids? To, oh, at least, yeah. At least. I mean, you know, when you're looking at the... The 190, I mean, he looked on camera like he's 200 pounds because he had such a great physique, but was he 180, 190 in the early 80s with that series with Tiger Mask? But goddamn the shape he was in, and he had the height with Tiger Mask, who was short 
to where it, the point is you weren't questioning dynamite's fucking toughness. He was a badass and the bumps that he took and the shit that those knee drops to the head, there was, there was a fucking cunt hairs worth of fucking play in between a lot of the shit he did and dangerous injury, but he was that sharp with it. There was, there wasn't a lot of daylight in his shit, but he didn't cripple anybody. He crippled himself. Um, so Anybody that wants to look and see how the modern junior heavyweight style came about, uh, the the modern style of the 90s and the cruiserweights and the 2000s and everything before they've just completely gone off the rails with it, it should be, it was Dynamite Kid and Tiger Mask. And they were the, Dynamite was the best from fucking England. He knew how to work all the, the European styles and he knew the fucking Calgary style. And... Tiger Mask, the original, Sayama, was the best young guy, the prodigy, in Japan. And he'd been to Mexico and knew how to work lucha and do all the shit. So they just, that was that was incredible stuff. I, besides, what do you think, besides Tiger Mask and Dynamite, that was the gold standard. Then there was, you know, Tiger Mask and, and guys like Black Tiger and everything. But did Dynamite Kid, who was Dynamite's best rival besides Tiger Mask? Or anybody in Calgary, any of the Hart brothers or et cetera. I always like the stuff with Dynamite and Brett. Because, I mean, there's stuff with, yeah. with them in Calgary. But there's a match from 85, maybe 86, Landover, Maryland, I think. Where, like you said, he does the knee drop off the second rope onto Brett's head. Oh, yeah. And it looks like he crushes his head. It's amazing. And he'd get a double bounce. Because he, he'd, he'd land, Bobby Eaton called it his heavy knee. The knee that he that Bobby landed on off the with the knee drop off the top rope with the left knee actually hit the the fucking mat and, and and he put weight on so that was his heavy knee the fucking dynamite would fly off the top rope and the, with bobby's knee was going to the chest his would go to the fucking guy's head and he'd get a double bounce on it where it looked like he bounced on the mat and on the guy's head and never hurt him um ken wayne years ago in in tennessee in the uh, late seventies, early eighties had been, he and Danny Davis had been to Calgary the first time. And, and he came back and he told me, Oh, there's this fucking guy, dynamite kid. And this was before uh video at the time. So this, this guy, dynamite kid, they had a ladder match. He fucking climbed. He stood tippy toe on the top of the ladder. And the other guy, he's, I think he said, Bret Hart fucking drop kicked it. And dynamite hit the, hit the top rope off the top of the ladder and bounced out into the fucking front row. He said, this guy's insane. He takes all kinds of bumps and what a fucking athlete. So guys were starting to talk about him as soon as he got in Calgary. Do you think Midnight Express versus British Bulldogs would have been good or would it have been a style clash? Ah, boy, I, I, Davey would have gone along. Davey and Bobby were the go-along guys, right? Davey would have gone along and, and, and he and Bobby Eaton would have had a ton of fun. I can see there being issues between Dennis Condry and Dynamite Kid because, well, I mean, I don't know. We never, I never managed anybody that worked with, with Dynamite, but Dennis would have definitely, the, the heels would have wanted to call the match and probably would have. But if Dynamite personally, who I once again, never spent any time around whatsoever, it was just, I was purely a fan from afar. If if he personally was as abrasive in some ways as I've been led to believe, he and Dennis might have bowed up at each other, which that could, could have got bad because neither one was in the mood to get let another guy get one over on him. But I'm, but the matches, I would have liked to have the matches with the with Calgary Dynamite and Davy Boy before Davy Boy put that last 40 pounds on from the steroids, and they were all able to do their shit, and... At the same time, you know, uh, I guess I just, I always thought that they were both, and Davy Boy carried the weight better than Dynamite, but Dynamite was so good when he was lean and fucking light. I just thought they were so much better before they put on the size they needed to go to the WWF. 